Hey everybody. I'm sure some of viewers may remember this laptop from a um, recent rant video that I posted sometime in the early part of 2014. This is that compact Presario CQ62 laptop. Remember how the motherboard failed in it. I was able to reflow it and get it going again. And then a week later it quit working again so as you can see it's working yet again. You're thinking, oh Nick, did you just try did you just reflow the motherboard yet again? Um not exactly. That's not exactly what I did. I actually did a motherboard transplant on this thing. And you're thinking, hey, you found you another uh, motherboard from another Presario CQ sixty two. Well, not exactly. Here's the funny thing about this. The motherboard that's in this computer now is a pull from HP product, but it wasn't from a Compact Presario CQ62. Right over there is the donor system. A scrapped HP G72. This has been featured on Q Computer Channel in the past. I think it was 2011 that I yes I did a power jack replacement on this thing I believe is what it was and um there was actually two G72's I worked on one was a fan replacement and one was a power jack replacement this is the one that had the power jack replacement done and that computer was just more or less I bought it for forty dollars as a trade in for a newer system the thing is this computer has been beaten <laughs> and like let's say it's I mean Cosmetic wise, it's not in very good condition. The LC display and lid are in perfect condition, but I mean, the um, palm rest had big chunks missing out of it from where it had gotten dropped in the past. The keyboard was missing keys, you name it, it just had some cosmetic damage done to it. Though I had a good motherboard. But if you think about it, the G72 and the CQ62 are kinda different. The CQ62 is a budget M model. So on the you know on the left side it only had spots for your audio to USB ports, VGA out, Ethernet. And that was it. Now if you look over here you can see that the G72 has your sound, your two USBs, your Ethernet, along with you know your VGA plus Hit plus an HDMI and a card reader. You're thinking, how the heck did you manage to get that to work? Well, I had to do kind of a hack job on the um, CQ62 to make things work properly. To make access to the um, card reader slot in the um, HDMI port, I had to do some hacking away at the side here. Yeah, that's what these are for. But yeah, um, basically, I took these and gnawed the plastic to get the break out, and for the most part, it doesn't look too bad. I have access to the HDMI port and the card reader. So yeah, basically, um, I managed to swap a motherboard out of a HP G72 into a compact Presario CQ62. Here's the motherboard out of CQ62. Here's a good look at it. Now the motherboards from these two computers are very similar. Now this one here, the CQ62, is an AMD based board. The one in the one from the G72 is an Intel. So two different two different platforms, but in terms of alignments and you know how this thing sets into the chassis perfect alignment just set right in like I mentioned the only thing I had to do was you know hack away at the sides to make access for the card reader and the HDMI port so anyway, as, you can, as you can see from the from the screenshot you may be seeing right now, um, these two motherboards are highly similar. And as you see, this was a successful motherboard transplant. 
I was able to get this computer back up and running and the owner's going to be very happy to see that their computer is up and running again and this way they don't have to worry about spending three to five hundred dollars on another computer because they didn't really want to spend a hundred something dollars on another um, CQ62 motherboard because apparently this motherboard just like the ones that are in the um, AMD based HP DB6000 computers suffer from failure due to overheating. Now the thing about Intel platforms is while I like AMD a whole lot Intel seems to be more reliable in laptops versus AMD and, I'm, and it's not the actual processors fault it's the chipsets fault. Now in this case this motherboard here has an AMD chipset so it was kind of AMD's fault here for not designing something that could hold up to excessive heat. Well, you know, it's it's hard to really blame AMD. It's really more of the motherboard manufacturer. And I don't know if HP themselves manufactured this. It probably has some third-party manufacturer this board. The thing is, this motherboard was built pretty cheaply. And due to the excessive heat, due to HP's design and the chipset running incredibly warm has caused micro gaps to form in the solder joints under this chip and that's what has caused this failure it seems like with intel setups they seem to be a lot more reliable so anyways as you can see that was a successful transplant and the reason why i did the transplant and didn't try to just fix this computer was because the owner had already spent quite a bit of money on replacement parts for this one. Like for instance that LCD display is only about a year old or so like that. Not very old. I put that display in I believe 2013 so yeah it's right around a year old. And the owner just bought a new battery which is also a fit for that computer but the thing is the owner likes this computer and they actually got some upgrades now along with a working motherboard so before I conclude this video I want to talk a little bit further about how computer setups are going nowadays at least with laptops the thing I like to see is how motherboards are shifting more toward system on a chip setups for example if you go to the Q Computer Company Facebook page now of course I posted this on April 10th which is the day I'm shooting this video AMD has released a system on a chip, an APU that has you know the CPU, the graphics, but also has pretty much all your communications ports like your USB, your SATA, all that kind of stuff all in one chip. And it seems like when you eliminate the chipset from the motherboard it becomes a lot more reliable especially in laptops. In most cases I see um, laptop motherboard failures due to chipsets but when you have APU setups like one of the G72's I worked on and many of the AMD subs that are out there nowadays it's just a whole lot more reliable to have a system on a chip rather than having you know your chipset on a board because think if the system on a chip fails you can just replace the chip and not the motherboard so this is kinda of my two cents to finalize this video so if you're if you're curious about can I transfer this HP G7 Two motherboard to a um, compact Presario CQ62? Yes, you can. With some modifications. As you can see on the side here. Kind of funny, but hey, it works. So, anyways, any questions or comments? Feel free to ask and thanks for watching.